Joe Biden apparently has a um, he has a panel, another one of these governmental panels. It is the 2025 Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee. Ooh, ah. So normally when you think about the Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee, you think maybe we shouldn't just like feed people things that will make them fat. How about that? How about that the dietary advice that we give people isn't run by the Department of Agriculture and a bunch of farmers who are trying to sell you corn syrup, which is literally what happened in the United States in the 1970s. Remember that food pyramid? Do you remember this? And the food pyramid at the bottom said grains. And then everybody followed the food pyramid and they got super duper fat because it turns out grains make you super fat, as we all know now. And it was driven entirely by the Department of Agriculture because farmers were like, hey, man, we're growing all this corn over here. What are you going to do with this corn? What if we just tell everybody that corn is amazing for you? Why don't we just tell everybody that all this wheat, you shove it down your gullet and you'll get skinny. The truth is you should be eating a lot more vegetables, a lot more fruits. You should be eating a lot more meat, a lot more eggs, fish. Very good for you. You should really skimp on the carbs. As anybody who's tried to stay in shape will tell you, carbs are effectively the devil. They taste amazing and they also make you unbelievably fat. In any case, what exactly is the 2025 Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee going to do? Well, we do have one indicator. Apparently, Joe Biden has now appointed a Dr. Fatima Cody Stanford. She claims that obesity is mostly genetic. She's one of the 20 doctors appointed to the committee, according to the Daily Caller, which will examine the relationship between diet and health through a health equity lens. Oh, goody, goody gumdrops. A health equity lens factoring in socioeconomic status, race, ethnicity, and culture. I didn't realize that being a fatso was a matter of status, race, ethnicity, and culture. How about caloric deficit, gang? Don't eat as much as you burn. That is, the, that is the rule. It's very, very simple. Now, it's not easy to keep. I will admit that I have not always kept to it. My weight fluctuates just like any other human. However, the wisdom of the ages does not change here. And it turns out that if you eat too much, you get fat. I know this is like very mysterious stuff here. They apparently are going to um, provide recommendations to the USDA and the Department of Health and Human Services. This particular doctor has claimed the doctors do not understand obesity and that many patients can't simply lose weight through improved diet and exercise. So on January 1st, she appeared on CBS's 60 Minutes, and she then explains that it's actually genetic. The reason that you're fat is genetic, so it's not any fault of yours. You shouldn't bother dieting. There's nothing you can do. You are doomed to be a large fatso for the rest of your life. It's a brain disease. It is? It's a brain disease. Well, like syphilis? And the brain tells us how much to eat and how much to store. Dr. Fatima Cody Stanford, an obesity doctor at Mass General Hospital, an associate professor at Harvard Medical School, says common beliefs about obesity are all wrong. I've always heard that it's the fast food, that it's the diet Cokes, that kind of thing, that is the instigator. Is that true? So I think we have to look at the different causes of obesity as a big pie. And that's one factor. But notice how I'm using this part of the pie, right? but the number one cause of obesity is genetics. 79 to 90% of physicians in the United States have significant bias towards individuals that are heavier. Oh, that's so sad. Well, I mean, by significant bias, you mean they tell people that they need to lose weight and then people get super offended? So my wife is a family med doc and this has happened to her before, right? Somebody will come in and it turns out obesity makes everything you have worse. Every single health condition you have, it makes it worse. COVID, it makes it worse. worse. Heart disease, it makes it worse. Various forms of cancers, they think now, are linked to obesity. And so if you tell somebody who is young and obese, you need to lose weight. And the way that you lose weight is you eat healthier, you get more exercise, stop cramming food in your face. If you say that, people get super offended. They're like, I'm, I'm just big boned. You're not big boned. Okay, I'm, I'm, again, it is not, we live in a society where it is now considered wise and normal to tell people that things they can fix are not in their control. And if you tell them they are in their control and they should fix them and it will be better for them if they fix them, people get super angry at you. Now we have the government appointing experts who say exactly that. She said, quote, for many of us, we can go on a diet. Something like the biggest loser, right? You go and you restrict people. You make them work out 10 hours a day. You feed them 500 calories. For most people, they will acutely lose weight. But 96% of those participating in the biggest loser regained their weight because their brain worked well. It was supposed to bring them back to store what they needed or what the brain thinks it needs. Well, which means that you have to break the brain habit. I mean, as everyone who has ever dieted understands, you have to come up with a sustainable plan for dieting. I'm not a diet and, and lifestyle advice show here, but I'm just telling you, you know, these sort of crash diets where you lose 100 pounds and you do it really, really fast, you are going to bounce back in the opposite direction very often because you have not come up with a sustainable diet that will last you the rest of your life. That is what you actually need. You need to figure out what you can do on a daily basis that is going to lower your caloric intake, and then you need to maintain that for literally ever. 
As part of her work on the committee, Stanford will provide recommendations to HHS and USDA that inform federal dietary programs and nutrition programs, as well as dietary education. The media are cry cheering over Donald Trump being readmitted to Facebook. They're cry cheering because they're actually very, very happy that Donald Trump is going to be more in the public eye. It gives them something to talk about. It allows them to get ratings and all the rest. They're, frankly, they're embarrassing. I'll tell you something else that's embarrassing, and that is going to the doctor for you know delicate issues. It's time consuming, expensive, and again, it can be very embarrassing. Rex MD is FDA approved. It's the most trusted leader in men's telehealth. They've made it simple, easy, and cost effective to help men feel more confident in the bedroom. Rex MD makes getting generic and branded Viagra or Cialis really easy. Everything is online, even the prescription. They deliver it discreetly to your door. We're talking no waiting rooms and no embarrassing trips to the doctor, no insurance, no copays. Take advantage of their best deal ever. Save up to 90% off, pay as low as two bucks per dosage with our exclusive link. Just go to rexmd.com slash Ben for this limited time deal. They are here to make sure that you save a lot of money. Did you know that Viagra can cost around 90 bucks a pill? RexMD has generic Viagra. It's just as effective for as low as two bucks a pill. RexMD has already helped over 350,000 guys gain confidence quickly and conveniently, and they are here to help you too, and they'll do it discreetly for you. Take advantage of their Valentine's Day deal by heading to rexmd.com slash Ben. My exclusive deal will save you up to 90% off since you'll be paying as low as two bucks per dose on generic Viagra instead of the 90 bucks plus on Viagra. Starter packs of generic Viagra or Cialis are now available. For my listeners to get started, that's rexmd.com slash Ben for up to 90% off. Well, Nikki Haley has been talking about running for president. And of course, Ron DeSantis is probably going to throw his hat into the ring. And Democrats are freaking out about this because it could spell the death of the Biden administration. Now, speaking of death, you should have a will. I mean, Joe Biden, I hope, has a will. He's an elderly man with, with children to inherit whatever wealth he, he got from his ill-gotten gains. But you should have a will as well. It is a smart thing to do. And this is why you can get it taken care of with Epic Will. For just 119 bucks in as little as five minutes, Epic Will can help you create your last will and testament, living will, even healthcare power of attorney. Their step-by-step -step online form makes it really, really easy. All you need to do is fill in the blanks. I can't stress how important it is to get this done. It's, it's really, really important. I mean, my wife and I, we have a will because we don't want the government disposing of our assets in case, God forbid, something happens to us. We don't want the government figuring out who gets to take care of our kids. This is all stuff you can take care of in your will. 50% of Americans do not have a will. Don't be one of them. Choose to be in the smarter half. Go to epicwill.com. Use promo code Shapiro. Save 10% on Epic Will's complete will package. That is epicwill.com. Promo code Shapiro. Again, epicwill.com. Promo code Shapiro. You can't afford not to have will. Kids can't afford for you not to have will. Head on over to epicwill.com. Promo code Shapiro. Get started today. Now, I'd like to point out here something, which is that we didn't used to be that fat a country. If this were a genetic condition, one of the things that you should think about is the fact that we didn't used to be even remotely as fat as we are right now. In fact, if you go back in American history, you go back to like 1980, it turns out, that Americans were significantly skinnier than they are right now. According to a study from the National Library of Medicine, and this is actually from the Surgeon General's Vision for a Healthy and Fit Nation, which is a governmental document, quote, the prevalence of obesity changed relatively little during the 1960s and 70s, but it increased sharply over the ensuing decades, from 13.4% of Americans in 1980 to 34.3% of Americans in 2008 among adults and from 5% to 17% among children during the same period. The prevalence of extreme obesity also increased during 1976 to 1980 and 2007, 2008. And approximately 6% of U.S. adults now have a BMI of 40 kilograms per square meter or higher. The United States is not alone in experiencing an obesity epidemic. Similar increases in the prevalence of obesity have been reported in developed countries such as England and in countries where obesity was formerly rare. For example, the prevalence in China among preschool-aged children living in urban areas has now increased eightfold from 1.5% in 1989 to 12.6% in 1997. So again, I'm noticing that, that modern society is, is either lighting on a bunch of bizarre environmental and, and evolutionary bottlenecks in which magically the transgenderism rate is multiplying by tens of thousands of percentage points and everyone is becoming rapidly fat just through evolutionary biology. We've hit the end of humanity just because, boom, we triggered a bunch of genes. Or, possibly, our culture is broken. And we've also made an enormous amount of fast food very easily available to people. Processed food, sugars, all this stuff is really, really easily available to people. And people are engaging in those sorts of things. And by the way, if, if you look at the countries that are the fattest, it is, in fact, a cultural thing. So that has little to do with brain function unless the idea is that certain cultures have different functioning brains than other cultures, which seems kind of racist to me. It seems more like what you have is that 
certain cultures actually promote eating unhealthy. Now, there, there are certain cultures where the diet is just different, right? I mean, if you, if you go to, to cultures in the, in the Asian Pacific region, you'll find that these are disproportionately overweight places, right? The Cook Islands actually is the most obese country in the world, followed by Nauru and Samoa and Tonga and Tuvalu, right? These are all countries that are in the Pacific Asian region. The United States, however, is apparently on the list. The United States is the fattest of the westernized countries. If you look at the obesity rate in the United States, it is currently 36.2%. By the way, the total obesity rate for both men and women in Nauru is 61%. Wow. The United States is about 36%. And then it's Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt. And, and th by the way, this is one of the reasons why when people make a comparison between the health outcomes in the United States and the health outcomes in, say, Norway, that is complete apples to oranges. You cannot make that comparison whatsoever. It's ridiculous to make that comparison. Like, the, the Nordic countries don't even chart in terms of the fattest countries. So maybe we should focus in on the fact that we have an actual obesity crisis in the United States rather than appointing people who make people feel good about the, the weight that they are carrying around rather than telling them that they actually need to lose that weight. This is having pretty significant downstream effects, not just on the health of the nation, but on things like, but on things like the, the military and our, our ability to recruit in the military. According to a 2018 RAND report featuring roughly 18,000 randomly selected participants across each of the service branches, 66% of service members are considered to be either overweight or obese. One of the big problems we are having in recruiting people to the military is that you're supposed to not be a giant fatso when you go into the military and too many people are showing up and they can't actually pass the tests. This does correlate with the obesity epidemic plaguing in the United States, where as of 2015, one in three young adults are considered too fat to enlist. One of the reasons, by the way, a huge number of people died in the United States of COVID is because we are a super fat country. And when people like Joe Rogan mentioned this and suggested, hey, guys, maybe as a first resort, we ought to go to the gym and lose weight. People laughed at him. It made people feel bad. Instead, we have to promote fat positivity and we have to suggest that you are healthy at any weight. You are not healthy at any weight. If you are 150 pounds overweight, you are 100 percent not healthy at that weight. Stop pretending that making people feel validated about how they look is somehow more important than protecting their health by telling them the truth about the health effects of what they're doing. If that were the case, by the way, then you know what looked really cool in like the 1940s and 50s? Smoking. Looked super cool. Watch all the movies. All the cool kids were doing it. And then it turns out it kills you of lung cancer. And so we said to people, hey, you know what you should stop doing? Smoking. And people stop smoking. But now we have, I guess if, if smoking were a, a full public health issue right now at the level that, that obesity is, I suppose now we'd be appointing people to government agencies to say that that really smoking is just a brain disorder. After all, addiction is a brain disorder. Just the foolishness knows no bounds. All righty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be getting into Disney shutting down Splash Mountain over racism, of course. Plus, Democrats may be cruising for a bruising in the Senate in 2024. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Click the link in the description and join us.